Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our trading room. It's Monday morning, June the 6th, 6 6 16. It's got to be a lucky number for somebody, I think. All right, uh, so we just had the markets open. Um, it looks like it's a relatively quiet open. You can see the Eagle left off trading here around 45.10. We opened a little bit higher, somewhere around this 45.20 mark. And uh, price is slipping lower, kind of covering in that gap somewhat. Trend mode, according to the trade forecaster, for nearly the next two hours. That'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. All right, well, we're waiting for the market to kind of get its bearings. Crude oil is trying to slip a little bit lower here. I want to show you something interesting on the daily chart. for the NASDAQ and you can do this for any chart it can be uh, the E-mini it can be the Dow we just happen to be looking at the NASDAQ here today oh and bear in mind folks if there's a market that you would like to see uh, please let me know I would be happy to open it up for you. All right, so here's a daily chart on the NASDAQ. What's kind of cool is how we are intersecting the trend line here. So since we're reacting to the trend line, we should expect to see some sort of reaction. See what happened last time the market hit the trend line? Up here, that originally started the move we should expect some sort of reaction here. So the big number to pay attention to today is Friday's low, which is a long ways away, or at least for us day traders, it's a long ways away. But if we start taking out Friday's low or getting really close to Friday's low, take a look at all the buying that's been going on here. Right? Take a look at the tails on these bars. There is some very aggressive buying going on here. The market's trying to react to the trend line. Buyers buy it up. Another reaction to the trend line. Buyers buy it up. William's asking, how do you get that nifty little data box? If you, my mouse has got two buttons and a scroll wheel. If you press down on the scroll wheel, you'll get the data box. If you have a three button mouse, click on the middle button. All right, so we'll see how that plays out right now. However, it's looking as though, well, we might be a little bit bearish. I'm trying not to impose my own ideas on this market, but Actually, we're dead neutral, aren't we? Right dead in the middle there. All right, here's a first micro-macro cross signal now on the uh, Hawk. The signal actually tripped right here. This would have been one of these signals where it's, do I enter early and cover deep, or do I enter late and try to cover a little bit you know, more shallow? Um, if you went with option A to enter early, your stops really need to be up here. Oh, I'm going to get this one in. Uh, come on. And I'm going to try to run this one out. I'm going to try to let this one go to see if uh, once we start breaking down below these little overnight lows, if we don't get some selling going on. I'll do this sometimes with a single 
contract. Just trying to run it out a little bit. So we'll just try to run this one out. Uh, we'll see how they react now to the lows. There's some obvious selling going on. I see Tom is in the room this morning. Tom had some questions about the Raptor. Great. We're going to focus a little bit more on the Raptor this morning. And William, I'm going to get to your questions here in just a moment. All right. So here we're getting a Raptor signal. How can we tell wh whether this is a strong Raptor signal or not? Well, it's kind of working a cloud crossover signal. The problem is we don't really have a test of the extreme just yet. So this is very similar to the Hawk trade that we're looking at. If we want to get in on this one, well, we pretty much have to cover the trade rather deep, don't we? Because there may well be a test of the extreme. Now, if this market comes up here a little bit, you know, just maybe barely breaks through the cloud and then starts coming back down, that could be a more aggressive sell signal. The fact that the market was unable to make a new high and now is challenging the lows is also a, a pretty good bet that prices may try to head lower. but only, only if they can take out the lows. Now, when you're looking at a signal like this as well, you may want to treat it as an early warning type signal. You know, you don't need to get on the signal right away. What we're looking at, let's see if I can show you the cloud crossover to the upside. Here we go. So, market obviously in a big downtrend comes up, gives us our soft edge buy signal here. This was a very nice soft edge buy because we did have the retest, the failure. The market comes back with the signal. We expect at least a retracement to the hard edge, which we got. Then we got the breakout, and now we're getting the cloud crossover. The cloud crossover, as the name suggests, the clouds change direction. And when they do that, we anticipate the market to retreat into the cloud. For it to then for the cloud to offer some sort of support and then the market to come out and generate a signal which we got right here that signal was reinforced right here when the market came back into the hard edge still maintaining those higher lows and then we came out with another subsequent hard edge bounce signal and a really nice little follow-through from that move all right, so here we are now. No real defined trend. The market really more or less sideways. And when the market is sideways, you do need to be careful. Good morning, Jim. Jim says the advanced decline a little lopsided in favor of the buyers. 1600 on the buy and a little over 900 on the sell. So that's like nearly a positive 700. That does tend to be fairly bullish. Okay, so here we are now with a hard edge bounce off of this support right here. Now what we can do, because the market is sideways, we can look at doing a second push entry. The second push entry simply means we allow the signal to engage, and there's a lot of times a reaction to the signal. You can see we're getting this reaction right now. Now that we know that the sellers are stepping in a little bit, we can bring in our buy order, right? See the sellers reacted, they knocked the market down right to here. We can come in now with our buy order because we know the current limit. And the reason I'm doing this is because the market is sideways. 
if we had a stronger trend going, or if I was concerned about the resistance up here interfering with my signal, I would take the signal earlier. All right, I better get a... There we go. We got our stop in. See, so somewhere up here, we're going to anticipate, <clears throat> pardon me, the sellers to become more aggressive again. Come on, get up there. Okay, now if this trade fails at this point, and we come back with a sell signal, we can become a little bit more aggressive on the sell, but let's deal with our long position first. Obviously, there's some decent support down here. We did see a little bit of a bounce. And it's early. It's about 10, 12 minutes into the session, so I just threw a single on there. Let's see if we can't get out of the trade with a quick little profit until we can get a better handle on which way the market may be leaning today. Okay, and while we're doing that, let me see if I can find Bill's email. Oh, excuse me, sorry, this morning I seem to be having a bit of a sneezing fit. <laughs> yeah, it took me a little while to clue into that, Bill. Bill says, all my emails come as William, but Bill is preferred. All It seems like everybody's proper name shows up here, so <laughs> if... If um, I'm addressing you by your proper name, it's just because that's what shows up there. So I got Joseph and James and William and Thomas. <laughs> All right. So here's Bill's question. He was saying, okay, I was looking at this trade the other day. What went wrong here? Because was this not a, a rule of three signal? Did this... Was this not a cloud crossover signal? Should I not have, you know, bought this? What ended up happening is that the NQ ended up reversing here and heading a little bit lower. Okay, so let's uh, deal with the rule of three question first. Is this a rule of three signal? Well, unfortunately, no. Yes, you did get three signals counter trend, or where was the third one? Oh, I see. Maybe you're looking at it like this. You were looking at it signal one, signal two, signal three. Ah, that could be what you were doing. Okay, um, if that is the case, technically you are correct that there are three counter trend signals in which case you should have bought down here. If, however, you're thinking the rule of three originated up here, where it was actually just two counter trend signals with the test of the extreme, two problems. Uh, first off, the rule of three does tend to develop a little bit 
is a little bit more condensed. It's something that happens when the market is starting to fall apart. It's like the last ditch effort. Um, so you have, normally you would have signal one, signal two, signal three, something like that. What, what really seems to be missing here, however, is, well, the test of the extreme. Uh, I see Bill just wrote here, but, uh, but I waited for the cloud cross as a confirmation. Not a bad idea. However, you really, really, really need to see that test of the extreme, especially in a tool like the Eagle, because you're looking at uh, sometimes, well, it's a trending tool, right? So without a proper test of the extreme here, it's hard to say at this point that the trend has truly changed. If the market gets up above these highs, if it gets back up above 45, 20, 21, then you can say, yeah, okay, there was no real test of the extreme, and now we've got a trend change because now we've started to take out some of the uh, recent highs. Let me show you here on a current chart. All right, so our Raptor trade, hooray, worked out. So we base that mostly on the strength of the support here. We generated a signal with trend. I would encourage you to consider taking profit before we get up to this trend line. If it breaks out, we can get another opportunity, I'm sure. But let's take a look here at the Eagle for a moment. <clears throat> okay, so here's a very similar signal to what Bill was looking at, except he had um, a couple buy signals print. You see, you just can't count the, the signals opposite. Is this a rule of three signal? Yes, it is. You get one, you get two, you get three. Uh, did you get a test of the extreme? Yes, you did. Um, actually, you know what? I may well have tried this one. Oh, um, yeah, I guess. It was close enough to this support back here. Here's one that didn't work out. And I may well have tried this one. So we have support here. The market comes up, comes down a little bit. Oops. We have had the test of the extreme. This is what I'm always looking for. I'm looking for that retest. I'm looking for the support off the lows. And then we come back and we generate a buy signal. Now, I would probably set up the trade like this. Right? I would try to see if the market's going to try to recover some of these highs, break out here, at least test this high. As we got closer to here, I may even put my break-even trigger somewhere around here. <coughs> Pardon me. This one goes up and then abruptly fails and starts heading lower. So once we start seeing um, the green bar sell, especially this candle right here, or if I passed on that candle, certainly this candle right here, I would consider bringing my stops in a little bit. I might think, okay, I'm on the wrong side of this trade, time to get out. But let's take a look at a scenario that's a little bit more like the one Bill was looking at. So we have a, obviously a, a very strong downtrending market. We've come back. We're going to pretend that we produce the rule of three type scenario like what Bill was looking at. And now we come back with a buy signal. We're going to pretend for a moment that this is our third buy signal. And this isn't going to be a very good example because this is the one that's going to be the exception that proves the rule. We have a very, very strong downtrend. Right? The market, market tried to reverse here without success. The sellers knocked them down real hard. And so now the buyers come back and they rally the market up. When I see a move like this, I don't expect the sellers just to fold. I expect the sellers to be very serious about maintaining the downtrend. 
Therefore, if, I, if this were my rule of three signal right here, it's not, but we're pretending now. We're going to say there was a signal here and there was another signal here. And so now this is my rule of three signal. I would be hesitant about buying this because of the strength of the downtrend. I would fully expect the sellers to at least try to recover the trend before the buyers reverse it and push it higher. So I would still be interested in selling at this point. Now, if the market started to head higher and now takes out this high, well, now I'm thinking, all right, maybe the sellers aren't that strong. But even here, I would be expecting at least one more serious retest of the lows. If not these lows, then these lows down here, right? This is the big low. So this is what I would be thinking when this market is printing this way. I'm thinking, well, there's got to be another test of the extreme here. There's got, the, the sellers just can't walk away. Now, like I said, this is the exception that proves the rule because, oh, actually, we did get a little bit of a reaction here. But not much as the sellers were pretty much squashed and the market, you know, limped higher. They did try to push it down here. They tried to knock it down here again. They tried to knock it down here again. <laughs> yeah, Bill says everything's much clearer when you're describing it. No, I know it is. Uh, when you're watching the chart unfold, you're always trying to get a handle on whether you should take the signal or not. First off, counter trend signals, you always need to be suspicious of a counter trend signal. The rule of three is essentially a counter trend signal. Here we go. Here's a rule of three in gold. Okay, so we've got a messed up market. It's pretty much sideways. You look at this and you say, yeah, this is pretty much a sideways market, at least for the last Oh, shoot, at least the last 10 hours. But we have a rule of three signal, don't we? We have one, two, three signals against a bullish band. We've also had a retest of the high. You could even call this a double top. And now we're here testing the lows. Now, I wouldn't necessarily take this signal on the hash mark because of this low right here. You could do a second push on the entry again. So you could let the signal engage. Look at where the limit of the selling is. It's right near these lows, right? So let's enter below the low, and we need to cover above the high. Why? Why do we need to cover above the high? Well, because this is the area that tells us that we are truly wrong about the trade. Right? If, the, if we get engaged at this point and the market reverses and trades in above the high, then we know, yeah, okay, that was, that was a bad call. The uptrend is still strong or strong enough and prices will continue to rally. Yeah, Bill says, um, yes, I remember you saying that uh, about counter-trend trades, avoiding counter-trend trades, that they're, they're a lot more or lower probabilities. In fact, you could use the rule of three signal as a early warning. If you get the rule of three signal printing, and the market is truly reversing, you're going to get a with trend signal. In fact, while we let that, oh, you know what, we'll follow this one for a little bit. Jim says, the DAX is putting in a hangman, so it might be looking for a reversal there. I did hear our profit target get hit. 
Yes, so we hit our profit targets both on the Hawk Scalper and the Raptor. And I'll go back to the Raptor in just a moment. As I know there's been some questions from Raptor owners. You see, what I try to do when I'm looking at a chart is I try to figure out who is controlling the market right now. And where are the buyers and sellers? Well, I know there's buyers here at 1245. I know there's buyers because that's where the market turned. I know there's sellers up here around 1284.40, 1284.50. They've shown it. They've tipped their hand. So now, if we can, we're generating a sell signal, if we can get below the lows, we're going to trap some of these buyers out of their position and that's going to force them to exit and their exit orders will be more sell orders which should help move the market a little bit lower where will the buyers come in again next class here is the gold chart where would I anticipate the buyers to come in next and I know you just eyeball the uh, the price level. I'm not expecting an exact price. If we break 1245, where would I anticipate buying to resume? Yeah, there you go. You guys got it. Down here around 1242-ish. And that's exactly right. As we get closer to this 1242 line, I would expect the buyers to become a little bit more aggressive. So much so that if this order fills, I'm going to move my profit target up here to around 1242.50, 1243. I don't want to be the last guy out. And with gold, I do tend to double the profit objective. All right, so now we're retreating from our rule of three trade. Note the width of this candle. Again, a lot of volume. If you don't have the dynamic equivolume bars, you can always put a volume chart on the bottom. Or you can click on the chart and you can see the volume. That particular bar had just over 3,900 contracts. The bar next to it only had 300 contracts. So a lot, a lot of trading there. Let's see how much volume was on this one. 2,000, 2,100 contracts. A lot of buying pressure here. And not just buying, but selling also. We don't, we're assuming the buyers, there were more buyers than sellers because the bar finished bullish. If it turns now at this point and heads lower. <laughs> and Jim says, no, the dynamic echo volume bar is, those are necessary. <laughs> All right, so let's see now if the Sellers can push them down one more time. Or if we're just going to stay within this trading range. And that's okay too. If we know that this is a tight trading range, right, like this, just a few ticks from top to bottom, well, then we just avoid it, right? We let it break out. There will be a retest. And then we look for our selling opportunity. And 
vice versa. We'd let them go out through the top, let them retest, and then look for our buying opportunity. This type of channel that we have here is far, far too small to try to sell the highs and buy the lows. You could try, but in a, in a really, really tight range like that, you just want to grab four or five ticks and get out. All right, so here they come again. Sellers pushing a little bit earlier. Gold is very, very sideways this morning. <clears throat> I don't know whether or not we're going to get any follow through on this breakout, but it'll be interesting to watch. Come on. All right. Well, you know what we're looking for. So if that signal engages, I will bring that back. In the meantime, let's take a look here what's going on with our NQ trade. All right. A little bit of a macro pullback going on. And I am going to focus a little bit more on the Raptor this morning because, we, as I mentioned, there were some Raptor owners sending me some questions. So let's take a look here at the Raptor. Do we have a subsequent signal? Well, we have the, the hard edge buy signal that we took here. Great follow through on it. And what I would be looking for now is I'd be looking for another hard edge bounce. So nothing really going on there at the moment. Uh, regarding this macro pullback signal, it is a valid signal. The structure is a little bit weak down here. Ideally, you want to risk it below the lows because that's where we know all that active buying is going on. All right, if you guys excuse me for just a moment, I'm going to be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Well, gold is still drifting sideways. And the NQ is kind of searching for some sort of support here. We did get the macro pullback signal trigger. But like I said, ideally you want to risk it really deep or as deep as you can afford. Because the NQ might be moving sideways also today. I didn't check the reports to see if we're waiting on some sort of report today. Here comes gold. Now with yet another possible signal, that essentially making this a rule of four, you could look to take the signal a little bit earlier. In fact, why don't we do that? We're going to look at taking the signal a little earlier, covering above the high. And I'm anticipating the signal to print here. We've got the triangle. We've got the warning dot. If we print the low, we're going to print the hash mark. And it's going to be at the same price that our other signal was. So because the market turned a little bit earlier here, let's take a look at the volume on this bar. 3,900 on this bar. So they're pretty evenly matched. Almost a thousand more contracts went through here. And obviously I'm hoping that additional thousand are short sellers. The safer entry is down here. Oh, and I was going to adjust my profit objective. So we'll go with our high probability profit target and we'll get our break even closer as well. Jim says the DAX keeps bouncing up against one of the primary support and resistance lines. Oh, that's the holdup. <clears throat> Ryman says at 1230 Eastern, Fed Chair Yellen speaks. So, yes, no doubt that has put a nix in today's trading. Traders are going to be a little reluctant to get too heavily vested one way or the other. One thing when you're learning your signals as well, the great thing about trading is there's no shortage of data, right? You don't even need to do it real time. You can just scroll back into your chart and you can say, Hmm, okay, well, here was a rule of three signal. How did this work out? And then you can see, oh, okay, there was a little bit of an uptick. I would have had to keep my stops down here in order for this trade to work out. Likewise, well, here is a, a rule of three slash a trend change. Oh, I had my retest of the highs. How did this work out? Okay, well, it struggled to get lower. I would have been profitable had I had X dollars for a profit target. So doing stuff like that can be a real time saver when it comes to learning your signals. Here's another rule of three, a very, very small band. We have had the retest. With the rule of three, you want to be sure that your three signals generate opposite the band. Sometimes you get so caught up looking for those signals, you don't recognize that the band has already changed direction. Right, so there's another rule of three. You say, okay, well, how did this one work out? All right, well, I would have had to, you know, place my stop down here and my profit target would have had to be X dollars and so on. <clears throat> and then you're also going to notice at times where you just get far too many signals producing. You're going to say, why am I getting so many rule of three signals, one after the other after the other, and how are those working out, if they're working out?
Oh, nicely done, Jim. Jim says he got his 21 ticks on his four contracts, so he's happy. That's a nice start to the week, Jim. Well done. Okay, so gold trying to drift lower. We're we're short this position. I'm going to put this on the shelf. We're going to go back now here to our Nasdaq market. Nothing brewing here on the Raptor yet. We would anticipate the market to come into the hard edge. We're at hard edge number one. We'll see if we get a reaction here. Given the dull nature of the market. Today, I might be inclined to think trading range. At least until after Yellen's announcement. Yeah, Jim says, can you shoot a trend line on that Raptor? Sure, I can. Shoot it back this way. So as far as the trend line goes, we've got support down here to look for near the uh, hard edge. <laughs> now we're generating a sell signal, but it's not a real good soft edge sell. The better soft edge sell would have had this bar here follow through with a little bit of an uptick, and then it come down. Ideally, we would see a soft edge sell signal somewhere around there, and we would anticipate a move down to here. Oops. <laughs> Just deleted my trend line. Uh, Jim says a trend line across the top and the bottom. Yes, of course. Usually I do a channel type trend line. I do tend to shoot trend lines top and bottom. We'll just take the more recent points here. So a little bit of a sideways range slash trading channel. Okay, we'll see if we come out here now with a buy signal, if we get a hard edge bounce. Very smooth progression lower here in the Hawk, which is why we had to run a deeper stop. We're sweating that, that buy signal. Actually, I think this macro pullback was also a four arrow consolidation. One, two, three, four signals. Yes. All right. Let's see if we're going to get a Raptor signal now. As we get the buyers making their first push higher.
or maybe not. The Raptor being the hybrid does um, favor quality over quantity. Come on. Boy, this is really quiet for a Monday. Hmm. Jim says, the bank index and the transport's both very strong. Well, we'll see if that trickles into the NASDAQ market. I would anticipate, you know, a retest of the highs, a, a push back to the 4528 area. And if we came back with another failure around there, well, then that would be would suggest that our top is in. So, Bill, did I answer your question regarding your Eagle trade? If not, I can... Okay, good. Because they're there's nothing going on here, so we could certainly go over stuff. Nothing, nothing going on. So, if I were in this macro pullback slash four arrow consolidation trade, now that the market has made a higher swing low, I would consider bringing my stop up. Maybe not jamming it right under there in case the market fails by a tick or two, but certainly nearby. Okay, now we're coming in with a red bar buy signal. Oop, and the red bar has just disappeared. Here they go. Let's see if we get that signal.
All right, well, <clears throat> like I say, if anybody has any questions, otherwise I'm just kind of snooping around here. Ah, great question. Uh, Bill asks, since it's slow, here's a question. You know you treat the macro pullbacks how you treat the macro pullbacks on the hawk, where things go out of sync as if they were a mac uh, first micro-macro cross. Can you treat the late signal entry fig signals on the Falcon as a trend change? All right, so if I... Let me see. Okay, so I think what Bill is asking is when things go out of sync like this, can you treat it as a first micro-macro cross signal? Yes, absolutely you can. The next signal that prints here where everything is in sync will be a first micro-macro cross signal, whether or not the micro line crosses over the macro line. Um, what I would be looking at here, though, is the macro pullback signal. Once the signal went into yellow bars, I would avoid it unless it was a four arrow consolidation. If this bar right here, if this signal right here was the fourth arrow to print on a four arrow consolidation pattern, I would still take it. because a four arrow consolidation pattern is a very strong pattern. But yeah, if the buyers come out of here and we get a first micro macro cross signal, yes, it will be a first micro macro cross. And sometimes you'll see it happen, the trend lines won't even cross over, but everything does go out of sync. That's the important part. Now, your next question on the Falcon, I'm a little less clear on. Bill asks, can you treat late signal entries on the Falcon as trend change? Now, the signal that we have on the Falcon is the late filter entry. Oh, I see. Bill says trying to draw an analogy between the Falcon and the Hawk. Um, I haven't given it any thought. Normally what I do is I trade the tools separate of each other because I know the programming behind each of them is totally um, separate. So just because I'm ge maybe generating a signal on the hawk does not validate a signal, a buy signal that I might be getting on the falcon. I do prefer to see the tools in sync. You know, if I'm generating buy signals on the hawk, it does make me more comfortable seeing a bullish trend in the Falcon and the Eagle. <laughs> yeah, I 
know. Bill says, I don't think I'm explaining myself very well. I'm a little thick this morning myself, Bill. I probably don't understand what you're getting at. And, of course, in this trading room, I'm the only one who gets to talk. <laughs> All right. Here is a trend change signal now brewing on the Falcon. And we would have brought our stops up here for our Hawk trade. This is a tough, very tough call. Technically, the market's a little bit more bullish, but it is a trend change signal. If it prints, it has not printed yet, but if it prints, it may end up printing somewhere right around here, around 45, 18, 3 quarters. For two more ticks, I can take it below the low, which might be my preference, and then definitely need to cover it above the high. All right, so there it prints. Not a warm, fuzzy trade. If you guys are looking to follow me in on a trade, not one that's giving me a great deal of uh, confidence. Because we're in the middle of uh, a trading range. If, in fact, we are trading sideways, we're right in the middle of the trading range. Essentially, the balance point, right? This is kind of the balance point through here. Sellers are going to sell up here. Buyers are going to buy down here. Well, I don't want to be selling into a spot where buyers are going to start to get more aggressive. Prices will stop their decline and start heading higher. This is why I'm not too terribly impressed with this signal. In fact, well, it hasn't engaged yet. What I would do is I could even dial it down, just throw a onesie on it. This is the type of trade. This is your dip your toe in the water kind of trade. Okay, we did produce a Raptor signal here. Technically, the signal did engage, but just like on the Falcon, I would, given that this low is only another tick or two away, I would enter below this low. But the market is just too sideways. Much rather see it get up here, retest, then fail. That's something I could get behind. So if we produce a buy signal here, hopefully sooner rather than later, I could get on board with that. This is kind of like a mini version of what we saw this morning, where the market made the double tap here and then headed higher. Come on, where's that signal? So there's our buy signal. And here too we got the chance for a second push on the entry. Not a bad strategy for a day like today. Let the market engage the signal. 
watch the signal retreat, and then look to buy in on renewed momentum. All right, come on. Uh, good question. Bill asks, on those second push entry strategies, do you place your entry at the high of the current bar or at the hash mark? At the high. The whole point of the second push entry is to avoid this type of scenario. So let's take a look at this signal right here. It wasn't a signal we would be interested in, but let's say we were. And let's say we weren't sure the market was going to head lower from here, so we take a second push signal. We let the signal engage, and then it starts to retreat. Well, once it started retreating, and let's say it gets somewhere above the halfway mark. Ideally, the stronger it looks, the better. Then I want to place my entry below the low, below the current limit, because this is where I know the buyers are are prepared to start buying from. So if I can, if I'm looking to sell, if I short below here, then maybe I'm going to trap some buyers in their trades. They're going to have to exit. And that would help move the market lower. Well, I guess I better get a stop and play here. I'll leave this one a little bit further back. Ideally, I would even put it down here below 40, 45, 14, 45, 13. That would be ideal. But again, not the best looking signal.
come on, get up there. says you're going to need a bigger uh, mouse to push that market. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I'm actually, with all this sideways action, I'm actually anticipating the market to come down and retest the lows. That's why I don't think this is such a good buy. <clears throat> yeah, Jim says a nice area to short. I think so. I think we're actually going to see this trade fail. I think we're actually going to see the market move down here. That's why I was talking about, you know, placing my stop way, way, way down here. Because that's how far away it's going to need to be if, in fact, the market is going to put in any kind of rally here. In fact, I'll bring my break-even trigger in somewhat on the off chance that prices actually do rally. Oh, good. Jim's trying to encourage me here. He says that the DAX is retesting the primary line and the bank index is strong also. So come on, get up there. Come on. I'll give you another little nudge.
Come on. <laughs> well done, Jim. Jim says, uh, I'm going to go hang some ceiling fans and <laughs> do some faucets. Four trades, 120 ticks. That's a good day. Nicely done. You were a busy boy today. Oh well, here we're going to put this away for now. And look at that, even our earlier trade here on the Hawk, still struggling. So I would, at the very least, have my stops here. Might even consider rolling them a little bit tighter still. When the market is this slow, it's hard not to get too anxious about a trade. but the market is very balanced. Well, just nothing going on right now. All morning's been very quiet, so I suspect nothing's going to really happen until after Yellen's announcement in about another other hour and a half. I think we're going to close up the room just a little bit early here. We're not missing anything. I do expect the market to try to head back lower, which is what we're seeing here now. Um might get one more push, but this may well be the retest of the high, in which case the market is going to head down here and retest the lows back around this 4511-ish mark. So if, if you do find yourself long at the moment, you're going to want to be careful. All right, you guys and girls, we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Hopefully things will be a little bit more active at that time. And, um, yeah, we'll talk to you then. Bye for now.